G'day and welcome to Ben's Works. On this week's episode, I'll be answering my most asked question, which is, how do I get my resin so clear? Before I show you guys how I'm going to make this egg crystal clear, there's a couple of things we need to know first. The first and most important thing is your resin. Make sure it's a casting resin. This is Art Cast by Just Resin and it's their slow set version. This particular one is mixed at a ratio of 3 to 1. Now when mixing, it's super important to take your time, mix thoroughly, otherwise the resin won't cure. Now this next item isn't a must have, but it certainly helps in eliminating your bubbles. And that's a pressure pot. Although you can live without one of these, it certainly helps in getting a clear cast. My pressure pot is just a converted paint sprayer. I have a video on how I modified it. I'll leave a link in the description. So they're the two major factors that'll affect the quality of your cast. But there are also a couple of minor ones as well. One is to mix slowly and pour slowly. That way you reduce the amount of bubbles that you get in your resin. So now you guys know how to get a clear casting. This is one that I've turned and shaped on the lathe. Now it's time to sand and polish and get it crystal clear. I'll be using my lathe to sand this egg, but if you don't have a lathe, the process is still the same. The whole idea is to grab your sandpaper and run through all your grits, but you don't progress to the next grit until you've removed the scratches from the previous grit. Now because I've got a good finish straight from my chisel, I'm able to start this egg at 400 grit sandpaper, but if you found you had some deep scratches in there, you may have to go down as low as 180. When sanding resin, it's always best to do it wet, and I just like to use a bit of water. Now I do this for two reasons, one, it helps keep the resin cool, and two, it helps to unclog the sandpaper. Probably the best tip that I can give when sanding resin is don't rush, take your time. A lot of the time you want to rush through the grits and see how it looks, but you've really just got to take your time and make sure that you're getting all the scratches out. Another good tip is to always wipe down your workpiece. That way you're taking away any dust and fine pieces that are on there. That way you don't create more scratches. Now the key to sanding is to not go up to your next grit until you're happy that all the scratches are gone from your previous grit. Now I can still see a couple of lines in there, so I'm just going to spend a bit more time on the 400. Now that I'm happy that all the deeper scratches are gone, I'm going to start moving through the grits. So my next one is 600, and once I'm happy with that, I'll go 800 and then 1200. Another thing I like to do is once I finish with 600 grit, I like to change my water. So that's what it looks like after 800. I've just got 1200 to go and then the sanding will be finished. Now that's all the sanding all finished. Now for anyone interested, that took me about 45 minutes to run through the four grits. So our next step now is to polish, and that's where all the magic happens. When it comes to polishing, I use my six inch bench grinder. Now I've just added a tapered spindle to one end. That way I can attach these loose leaf polishing pads. I normally use two different wheels. I've got a one inch wheel and a three inch wheel. I use my one inch wheel for coarse compound, and then when I'm ready to do the finishing pass, I'll put on the 3 inch. There's two compounds that I mainly use when I polish. One is called Yorkshire Grit, and this is their microfine abrasive. And the other one is Car Polish. Now make sure if you're going to use Car Polish, get one that is really fine. To start off with, I'm just going to use some Yorkshire Grit. So now I'm finished with the coarser compound, I'm going to swap over to the 3 inch wheel and use some turtle wax. A 
good way to tell how coarse your compound is, is just to run it between your fingers. If you can feel little bits in there, you know it's a real coarse compound. If you can barely feel anything at all, you know it's a good finishing one. This is the most exciting part, when you get to polish it with your microfiber and see how good it looks. Well guys, there you have it. That's how I polish my resin to get it crystal clear. Now if you guys don't have a lathe, you can still achieve perfect clarity the same way I did my Lego boys. If you want to see how I made that project, I'll leave a link in the description. Well that's all for this week's episode, I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget, if you want to try Artcast for yourself, you can grab a 10% discount by using code word BENSWORKS10.